you might have gone through your life and you might have done something that wasn't good, wasn't right. You know, you changed, right? And I think it's important to not be ashamed of that and to be like, okay, look, I didn't know. And now I know better. And the willingness to admit that is an important step in personal growth and development and evolution. And when we try to keep secret and we try to deny and we have shame around the things that we did poorly or we did wrong, what happens is that we hide a part of ourself and we, we actually stay stuck to it. It becomes an anchor. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Well, how's everybody doing out there in podcast land <laughs> listening to us? Oh man, there's been uh it's 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 quite something that's uh, going on out there and uh, we had a, a pretty a pretty lengthy conversation about what we want to get into and what and 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 we, man just yeah what we wanted to get into cuz it's uh it's interesting times out there um so we settled on the title and the theme today of your gifts deserve your attention. And there's a lot of reasons why this is our title. This is our theme for today. Um, you know, just for one, the importance of recognizing our gifts at any point in our lives, but also in being reminded that they are still important things. And in fact, sometimes they're even more important when we're in times of uh, instability and confusion, um, you know, and lots of voices uh, asking you for your attention, for your loyalty, for <laughs> all kinds of things. It's, and, and knowing, um, you know, for people who want to be standing on the right side of history, uh, it, it, it can be a confusing thing. And so there's, there's all of that. And I'm sure a lot more that we're going to get into, but, uh, I think we've got, I think we've got a pretty, pretty juicy little topic to get into. Yeah. There's a lot to say. It's, there's so much going on in the world and it's easy to get all your attention focused out there on that. And it's important to put your attention on some of this stuff. Um, but it's also important that you put a little bit of attention on you and what you're doing and what matters in your life. But at the same time, not to put all your attention on yourself and ignore what's going out in the world, because there's a relationship, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a, there's a connection and, you know, too much of one or the other is not healthy. And yeah. so I think what we're going to try to do is, you know, have a conversation, figure out, you know, maybe where do, where do we, where do we stand in relation to some of this stuff? And when I say stand, it's like, you're walking down your path in your life. And then all of a sudden chaos occurs around you. You're still on your path whatever that is. And it's mm -hmm. always important for you to keep one foot grounded in that because your path has a purpose and it has a reason and there's a point to it. And mm -hmm. if you abandon it, you abandon your gift and your gift is what's going to help the world. So as much as you try to go out there and help everybody else, if you don't honor what is you and what your gift is and what's important, then you actually can't give your gift and you therefore can't help the world. But if you make it all about your gift, then you're not giving anybody anything because it's now it's just about you. So yeah, a relationship of balance and, and integrity with this, I think what it comes down to. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's like in many ways, that's like the, the, the balancing act that like the great artist does, you know, it, there's, there's a foot in and there's a foot out, you know, like you've got to be a part of the world, but you know, you have to, in some ways have, have a part of yourself that is able to kind of stand outside of it so that you can, you can communicate something new. You can see something that you can't see when you're all caught up in it. So, um, yeah, it's an incredible sort of 
balance that that it is within artistry and it's within in some ways keeping our sanity um when things are 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 so up in the air mm-hmm. and um you know, and and it's not about necessarily having the right answers, but it's about you know, like c- coming back to like what is what are my gifts? What do I feel called to do in this world? Um, to create, to contribute, all of these these big questions. Which, I mean, maybe that's the starting point for this conversation is just like, you know, maybe a refresher in some ways about like, you know, just the importance of, of having some sort of knowledge and relationship with just knowing, you know, what your sense of, of calling and purpose is in the world, because that's also where your gifts are. It's very often also where some of our greatest challenges lie as well. But those things don't, like your gifts and your purpose does not go out the window in the face of, um, you know, incredible change and upheaval, you know? Um, and I think that that's something that can easily happen. Things start going crazy and then we forget about the thing that is at the kind of the, the core and center of who we are as people. And that's when we look at it that way, that's the last thing that you want to forget about and lose in those times <laughs> more yeah. so than ever. That's where you want to be going into. That's where you want to find your strength from, because that is what gives you guidance in how you respond to the things that are going on around you. Yeah. It's your center point. It's, it's in a lot of ways, a person's foundation. If you know, we talk, you kind of mentioned there, uh, mental health, you know, not going, not losing your sanity to all this, right? You know, it's like your mental health is largely related to your gift and your purpose. And if you have no purpose, if you have no connection to self and to what uniquely makes you an expression, then you, you will lose your mental health. It's, it's just the nature of it. You know, I I just, something I've come to realize more and more as I've gone through my journey is how depressed so many people are. And not just because chaos is going on in the world, but because so many people are settling, doing a job that they don't like. That, that, you know, that can only drive you to a mental health issue. Because you know, if you let yourself get to the point where it becomes all about trying to service something else that isn't inside of you, there is no other option. So, you know, people have to do all sorts of things to talk themselves out of that. They got to, you know, they have to tell themselves stories and then they, they do all sorts of things of distraction of watching TV, of drinking, of eating, of doing whatever to try to numb the fact that they just don't feel good about that. So, you know, as you're going down your path, um, I think that, you know, the world can pull you in all these directions, but remember for you to help the world, you need to be full and whole inside yourself and that's part of that is, is what matters to you is important. And don't mm-hmm. let the world talk you out of that. Not just, not because you making what's important to you takes you away from this, but because it helps this, this mm-hmm. thing you care about outside of you is helped because you care about what's inside of you. Yeah. In a lot of ways, the external world and your relationship to the external world is an expression of your own relationship to your internal self. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, 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 it's sort of like when you're trying to find what is like, what do you do? How do you help? And it's just like, that's where it's like, well, just go back to your gifts. What was the thing that you were trying to do before? You know, what was that? What was that thing before all of this? It's just like, it, I, I promise you that your gifts have something to, to help, you know, um, the world you know, and no matter what, what stage it's, it's in. And this isn't to say, you know, like we're talking about mental health and, and we're talking about, you know, um, we're, we're, I guess we're trying to take a pragmatic approach to, to what's going on, but that doesn't mean that it's in the absence of emotion. You know, it's just like, it's, it's with, it's totally, 
natural and understandable to to be incredibly upset you know to acknowledge that you could like like there's a lot to be upset about to be angry about to be sad about um there this is not in lieu of that but it is a response with that as opposed to a reaction you know the difference between having a reaction to something and having a response to something and that's where our gifts can can come in because when we re- we react we are prone to to lash out to create more divisions to become destructive in in ways that aren't helpful because i do believe that there there is an elements of destruction that are actually helpful sometimes you know things have to to come down in order for there to be room for something new and better to come into the fold but there's it's sort of like constructive deconstruction <laughs> in an interesting way and that's where where the gifts come in our gifts can be a constructive deconstruction at times hmm. you know it's it's a it's a, a healthy way of resp- of turning a reaction into a response because there's something conscious that has to happen there it, there we have to take a second to think about what it is that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, I, I think that it, it, you know, what is a must in your life is what guides your life. Not, not what you want, not what you need. It's what you must, it's what must happen. And there, there are certain things that must happen. There is change that must happen. And Mm -hmm. we're getting to a point now where, people have had enough and we will continue to have enough around certain things. And, you know, in the next hundred years, in the next year, in the next 10 years, the next hundred years, you're going to see an incredible amount of change because what's, what's happened is people have gotten to the point where it's not just, I want this to change. This needs to change. Now it's, it must change. And there's something awesome about that. You know, as, mm-hmm. as toxic and ugly as this is, most musts in our life, both personally and globally, come from tremendous, incredible pain. Mm-hmm. And people don't like to hear this, but when you find out that you got some illness and you got a year to live, a week to live, six months to live, and if you don't change, you're dead you must change and you will change a lot of the time. And some people don't, some people give up and they let it go and they say, well, that's it. I'm dead. I'm going to accept that. But there's a lot of people that still want to live. And for those of us that want to live, we go, nope, we're carrying on and this is going to change. So at the same time that things must change in the external world, there's also look inside yourself and use that same energy to change yourself. And, you know, one of the things that I've experienced through this most recent of these recent events, um, you know, particularly, I'm just going to mention Floyd, you know, that whole situation with the knee on the neck, that is just, it just totally just brings fire to my belly and it makes me want to change the world. And, and what happens at the same time is I feel this incredible amount of powerless feeling, right? Like I can't do anything about it and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do it. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. And what we're realizing when we feel powerless is that we have not done the preparation to get ourselves to a place of power when something like this happens to make the change that we need to do. And so now we're beginning to get prepared. So don't expect that change will happen immediately because we haven't been prepared, but now we are preparing. We must prepare because we realize that if we don't, that the alternative is so ugly that we are unwilling to accept it. So in Mm -hmm. this time, in my opinion, this is a time of preparation, massive preparation. These riots, this is not this is not the change. This is preparation to the change. Just watch. This is the beginning. These types of things, right? And if people let it go, if you let it go, the cancer comes back, you know, the, the sickness comes back. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's a just like you're trying to change the external world, you gotta look at your musts inside yourself. And you got to be looking at how am I comfortable? How am I complacent? How am I letting go of my dreams and my goals and my visions? Because when it gets to the point where you get to a point where it's toxic, you've made many transgressions to get there. 
And I think what we're all, it, we're all realizing right now as a humanity is we're realizing that we made many transgressions. We let it get to this point. Mm -hmm. We didn't, something happened and we didn't do anything. Something happened. We didn't do anything. Something happened. We didn't do anything. And now this is undeniable. You know what I mean? And I hope, I mean, in the, in the deep, deepest part of my heart, I hope that this is enough to wake enough people up to say, let's change it. But at the same time, as we're going out there and changing it, you still have to keep you true. It's vital because mm-hmm. both are there, there, there's a symbiotic relationship between self and the expression that we have in the world. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't neglect self and expect the world to heal. And you can't neglect the world and expect yourself to heal. Yeah. What you're saying reminds me of a great quote and I'll actually remember who this person is this time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, from the author, Frederick Buchner. uh, I thought this so beautifully and succinctly said, but he said, uh, your vocation is where your great love and the world's great need come together. And I mean, right? Like, (laughs) (laughs) like, you know, I, I just thought that it was just so, so beautiful. And I mean, like, and it just speaks so much to what you were just saying. And I think what we're, what we're, trying to say um with with this topic and and this particular uh this particular show is that you know you have something that you absolutely love to do something that is um crying to come to expression if whether you are or you're not but deeply deeply wants to to be involved and to, and to contribute in whatever way you and your expression wants to contribute. And there's a place where that part of you meets up with something that the world desperately needs right now. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we kind of keep coming back around to this, this, this thing of like your, and, and why we said like your gifts deserve your attention. Yeah. Right now. Attention. I mean, that's the key word, right? Yeah. Attention is magic. Yeah. And like, I, I was also thinking of attention when you were talking about preparation, you know, and how we've been unprepared. Well, the reason why we have been unprepared is because there are things we haven't been paying attention to. Yeah. But the good thing is, is that the remedy is right there. (laughs) It's, it's in the problem It's like, okay, now we just need to start giving some things, our attention, right. Both within ourselves and collectively, you know, we have things that we have to give our attention to. Um, But I always like to say, it's like the, the first place we need, like we need to begin with ourselves. You know, usually that's the first place that we need, um, we need to, to begin with, um, you know, like it's, it's, uh, there's a a great, um, a very interesting, um, sort of speaker and, and, and social commentator, um, out there named Coleman Hughes. And I heard him recently say, uh, it was something like activism, uh, activism like begins with, informing yourself. So before you can get involved in any kind of activism into, you know, putting yourself out there, you need to be informed. And that doesn't necessarily just mean informing yourself to issues that are going on out around you. But in many ways, it's informing yourself about yourself. It's about Mm -hmm. informing yourself about, you know, your experience, what you're calling your gifts, getting in tune with those things um, before going around and and sometimes telling other people what they should be doing, should or should not be doing. Right. You know, it's, um, you know, even like the old um, Christian parable of uh, it's like, it's like you accuse me of the speck in my eye when you don't see the log in your own. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's directly saying like, we, like we have to begin with ourselves, and that's not 
to me, that's not a statement that's hostile and pointing a finger. Um, in fact, it's some, that's a sentiment and a statement that needs to be said with the utmost compassion because I think within understanding and compassion of ourselves and our own um, errors, mistakes, places we've been ignorant, things that we have um, not been giving our attention that have been causing a, a great, great pain. Um, by understanding that, we expand our capacity to understand other people. We understand our, our capacity to have compassion for other people and the pain that they are in. And it's only in that compassion that we can share our gifts and that we can actually find some way of having a dialogue and, and finding justice, real justice. Um, a speaker that I listen to a lot is Jim Ron. And I think he's a great speaker. He's one of the best public speakers, in my opinion, in history. And he talks about how evil, if you want to call it that, is just so easy to do. And that's why people become evil. That's why they do that. Mm. Because it's easy to not do what you need to do. It's easy to not get yourself off the couch and go for a run. It's easy to eat that shitty food. It's easy to keep doing this job you hate instead of pushing yourself into the dream. So when you think about world issues, right, when you think about that type of stuff, um, you know, it's easy not to do that. But if you can't even make your own bed and then you're going to go change the world, come on. Like, let's get real here. Who's fooling who? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like people like to say, oh, you know, people are so bad. Look at your own life and look at how you are. Look at how you clean, like clean your house, take care of your stuff, right? Do your tasks, the things that matter. Because if you can't do that, then your power over the rest of the world and others and being a leader is not going to happen. So it, it all begins, it all begins with us. And I think that's an important thing for people to remember. It's like, like you, if your house isn't clean and you're telling someone else to clean their house, like that's hypocrisy. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's like a lot of intended good in the world. People want to do good, but in some ways there's a, there is a kind of a, you do it so it can make me feel better. Right. It's like, you got to be in this too. You know what? And we're all in this. So, um, it, you know, bad things happen. Evil occurs because we're, we're lazy. We're complacent. We are unwilling to do the things that we need to do to take care of the things that need to be taken care of. I mean, you can use this in any example. Say you have a date and you want to bring that date back to your house to entertain them or to, you know, to make dinner, but your place is a mess. Now you're not prepared. So now you can scramble and you can try to get that done or, or you can like, just, you know, maybe they come to your place. And, and here's the other thing. Your place is a representation of your mind. Now that person is going to be entering your world. So if you think that you can have a dirty home, and you, and you're not going to have a dirty mind, like not, and I don't mean dirty in a sexual way. I mean, dirty mm -hmm. in like, there's things that need repair. There's things that need cleaning. It's like y y everything is a reflection. So, y you know, it's very, very important to look at yourself and figure out who do I need to be and how does my life need to be prepared and set up so I can actually do something outside here in the world. And, y you know, it, it, it's, it all comes back to a self-reflection. And I think that's the most important thing for people to see is that, you know, you can make great change in the world, but you got to take care of yourself and you got to clean your house. You know, you got to, mm -hmm. you got to take care of your business. And I don't just mean clean your house. Literally. I mean, clean your house, like a metaphor, get mm -hmm. your life together, figure that out, you know, take care of these little things. And then when it comes out to the outside world, then you're going to have an authority. You're going to have an integrity. You're going to have something to actually stand on, you know, but like, it's very difficult to point the finger at somebody else and tell them to do something when you know, in yourself, it doesn't matter if they know it, when you know, in yourself that you're not doing it, you know, you need to hold yourself to a higher standard in your own life. In my opinion, mm -hmm. I think that 
you know, I just think that's a wisdom that's way beyond me or this lifetime. I, I think that's like human nature. We all need to, that, that's something, and it'll be timeless. Mm-hmm. You'll have to take care of your own stuff if you ever want to make a difference in the world. Yeah. So it's just yeah. part, of the, and, part and, of the deal. And a part of that is, you know, doing the things that enrich us. You yeah, know, there's exactly like it's, um, you know, and it's, there's a lot of resistance that comes with it. You know, like that's one of the things I was recently reminded of in, um, in, uh, the incredible Stephen Pressfield book, you know, the war of art, which is that it's just like the more that, you know, you are supposed to do something, the more resistance you're going to feel towards it. At least it's, you know, maybe not always, but very often that's the case because I know that like just for myself, there are certain things that I know it's like, oh, okay, these are the, the things that I want to be doing every single day because they actually like they enrich me. I experience these things as enriching my life and, and my gifts and the things that I want to share. It doesn't mean that they always necessarily come easy, you know, but they are absolutely uh, essential in giving us a foundation and a platform that we can, that we can actually stand on and trust in, you know? Um, Cause it's just like, there's, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of, of noise out there with, you know, all of the things that are going on in, in the world right now and all of the uncertainty that's going on. And there's not a lot of people listening to each other. You know, there's a lot of, just uh, who's right and who's wrong in everything. And it's just, it's just about trying to, to make somebody else wrong and make yourself right. And I don't know where solutions are in that. I don't know. I I mean, I can say one thing about that, you know, say here's an example. Say you want to build the largest, largest building in town. There's one way you can do it, which is you can build the largest building in town. You can build it and create it and figure out whatever that is. Or the other option is you can start tearing down all the other buildings to make yours the tallest. But here's the problem. The moment you start tearing down other buildings, you, you maybe you get one, two, maybe you get three down. But eventually you're going to be known for a destroyer and not a creator. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, when, when we're trying to be right and wrong, when you're trying to be right, you're a destroyer. That, that's a good way to put it through your mind. And people are going to know you to be the person that always wants to be right. So stop doing yeah. that. That's not creative. That's not helping. That's destructive. So yeah. creative is saying, this is how I see it. And then look at this way you see it. And let's try and, you know, and let's raise our buildings together. And let's yeah. try and, you know, not tear one down to make yours mm-hmm. bigger. It doesn't, yeah, that's, it doesn't help. That's the thing. Cause like, yeah, we were just talking like, or before it's like, you know, how sometimes destruction can be is, is a necessary thing, but you know, it's like, but the destruction of a person is, is where it becomes a problem, you know? And just as like a personal note, man, I absolutely, I, I can't stand it when I see like these videos posted on like YouTube or whatever. It's just like, watch as this person destroys this person. It's just like, so, and, and so what? Like, where do we go? We just become more firmly, like we just create deeper divisions and people are more firmly in each other's camps and nobody's really talking or listening to each other anymore. Nobody's real gifts are coming out. We're not connecting on a human level anymore. You know, like it's, that's just a, just, just a side note to all of this. I just had to get that one off of my chest. <laughs> it's, related. Let's, let's it's stop, related. Let's stop this, this, this thing of destroying and tearing each other down. Yeah. There's like, there's, there's the, that's a go nowhere game. It might feel good in the moment, but ultimately we've, we've accomplished very, very, very little at the you end know, of it. I think the other thing too is like, you might have, you know, you might have gone through your life and you might have done something that wasn't good, wasn't right. You know, you changed, right? And I think it's important to not be ashamed of that and to be like, okay, look, I didn't know. And now I know better. And the willingness to admit that is an important step in personal growth and development and evolution. And when we try to keep secret, 
And we try to deny and we have shame around the things that we did poorly or we did wrong. What happens is that we hide a part of ourself and we, we actually stay stuck to it. It becomes an anchor. Um, mm-hmm. So first and foremost, I think every person, when you, when, you know, maybe you did something and maybe your family said something, or maybe you did something that was kind of racist or kind of sexist or kind of whatever, or maybe you stole something or you didn't pay someone back some money and you know, it's not good and you know, it's not right. And you kind of change and you don't do that anymore, but acknowledging that you did it, acknowledging that at a time in your life, you were unaware of that and that you grew past that allows you to see that other people can grow and change. There's, there's a certain kind of opinion that some people have, and I highly disagree with it where they go, well, someone did this bad thing. They're bad forever. It's like, they're not, they did a bad thing. Yes, but they can learn and they can grow. And in fact, that's what we need them to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like what, what's your alternative genocide, kill everybody who's ever been racist and sexist in the world. Like that's the answer. That's not the answer. The answer is anyone who is, or has been sexist or racist or whatever else, or a thief, let's help them transgress that or progress through that, not transgress. Let's help them transform that. Right. Not, not transgress back to it. So they stay there. Let's Mm -hmm. help them evolve it because it's not about, everybody being born perfect. This is about a world of us getting better and fixing things that we were ignorant to and naive to, you know, and being compassionate and forgiving of each other and, and allowing room for us to grow and breathe and change. Yeah. Well, cause I mean, if we live in, in a world where nobody can make mistakes ever, you know, especially today where it's like, you know, it's, it's easier than ever to, to find something on someone that, that someone said at some point. And if everyone's just afraid of making mistakes all the time and being wrong, then it's, there's, we can't, we can't find something new. We can't discover something new. I mean, there could be things that we're saying on this particular podcast that we'll look back on and be like, Oh, you know, that was a mistake. You know, it wasn't because we have a bad intention, but just simply, you know, we're human and we're, yeah. we're fallible. And that, that goes across the board where, and, and if we can create some room within ourselves to make mistakes, then again, it always begins with yourself. If yeah. you can forgive yourself for the mistakes that you've made and you can allow yourself to have room to continue to make mistakes, well, then we are then we're open to learn something. We are, we are open to, you know, allowing other people to make mistakes as well and not hold that over them so that those people can actually learn and heal. And, and, and we can all kind of come together on some of these very, very important issues that, that we find ourselves immersed in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I want to mention something. I want to come back to this Floyd, you know, George Mm -hmm. Floyd situation, right? So there are some people out there in the world and I disagree with them wholeheartedly, but they're like, well, he was a criminal. Listen, did they serve their time? Here's the thing. If you have a person who actually did something that was criminal, if they served their time, they paid their dues. Okay. So now if you keep calling them a criminal, they're not a criminal anymore. When you're in jail, when you're in prison, maybe you can say that person is classified as a criminal. Criminal history has been abused in America. Just look at the books and to justify murder because somebody did something bad in their life, that is absolutely just so toxic. But here's the thing. How do we do that on a small scale, day to day to each other? How do we justify treating someone bad or letting somebody take a hit or a hurt because they did something bad in the past. Now, did they, did they apologize? Did they pay their dues? Did they figure it out? If they did, you don't, if you hold that against them, you hold it against yourself. You create a very bad world that, that is like, um, you know, just a little history lesson here. The black male in, uh, America was incriminated as a form of extending slavery. So, um, criminality in America in some ways is a death sentence. So that needs to change. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if 
if you commit a crime and you pay your dues and you're done, now you might commit another crime and you might have a criminal history. And yeah, that might have hurt your reputation, but we don't, if we keep holding it against people forever and we make them something and we label them something, we justify actions like that. And, and I don't want to live in a world where those types of actions are justified because at some point that was a little kid with dreams and goals. And for whatever reason, born in a certain situation, certain life circumstances, made certain choices. You got to understand that most people who do bad things, they didn't do them because that's what they wanted to really. It's because they were born in circumstances where that made sense and they felt pressure to do it. People mm -hmm. who don't eat well in some ways are just like, look at that. Like it's not necessarily always your fault. Sometimes it's the family you came from. It's the poor education system you have. I mean, it's not about blame, but it's about having compassion and understanding that we didn't come always from a place of full awareness and good education and good mentorship. Yeah. So we got to give people a little bit of breathing room, breathing room, right? So that we can actually live our lives and actually correct things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a metaphor, you know, it's like, look at this stuff, like see yourself as the murderer, see yourself as the person killing someone else's potential and dreams by holding them down against some little thing they did, something that they did wrong. And we're all doing that. You know, yeah. we're all the guy with the knee on our neck and we're all the guy with the knee on the neck. We're all of that. And then when we see that, we begin to have compassion and understanding and we start to, we start to see how we're wrong and we start to see how we need to be better, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's a harsh example. And, and most of us don't want to see ourselves that way, but you know, you brought up something before the conversation started, we were talking about acting and how our teachers have always pointed out that you don't judge your character. And sometimes you got to play a character that's not a good person and they're, they're an evil person. They're a bad person. They've done toxic, bad things, but you got to try to understand where they came from and how that made sense to them. It's such a good thing for everybody to do, to try to understand where people are coming from, because not to say that it's okay what they did, because it's not, but yeah. when you understand where they come from, you can help them change it. But if you don't, if you just judge them, they'll keep doing it and you'll keep being frustrated with it and you'll be stuck. Yeah. Because ultimately we never end up confronting the ideologies and the systems and the things that created the problem. You know, it's just like, it's, it's, we were sort of relegated to, you know, continual band-aid solutions um, to, to a number of our problems. I want to, um, just bring this back around to uh, our gifts thing again, because yeah. it's just something that was striking me. It's like, because I think we've covered pretty sufficiently earlier on just about how important it is to continue to allow your gifts to, to grow and to contribute something during um, uncertain times. Um, but also the value of, um, especially in, right now with, with lots of debate and argument over things, you know, we need to, to be gracious for, towards others as well, you know, who we might disagree with. And one of the ways that we can do that is by looking for the gift that others are trying to bring, you know, by looking at the gifts that other people have to bring to the table. And very often that can help us to, to just see the humanity, to see how somebody else is trying to do what they feel is right and is trying to help in the way that they know how. And, you know, it's possible that sometimes those are, it could be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit not quite correct in its path. There might be some, some errors along the way, but by learning, by being able to acknowledge someone else's gifts and maybe to see through some of the you know, the surface distractions of, of what's being said and being able to get to the heart of what somebody has to give, you can help them to bring it out. You know, you can help connect to a person on that level and say, it's like, Hey, I can see what you're trying to do. 
and you're trying and it's like, and I can see that this is your passion. This is what you're trying. And, and, and we can appreciate that. We can honor that. And within there, there is, there is a space for us to connect and find solutions through giving the attempt, giving our attention, not only to our own gifts, but giving our attention to the gifts of others. Hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think to, to, to kind of tail this conversation off, I'd like to switch gears a little bit because, you know, I got fired up there and I think, you know, we're talking about some things that are difficult and challenging and throughout history, there have always been difficult and challenging things and there will continue to be, and we will be challenged as humanity to grow and learn and evolve. And we'll continually have to raise our game and we'll become better and we'll become less of the bad things and more of the good things. So long as we keep our ideals and things in in place, I think that a healthy human being is somebody who has purpose and has a connection to themselves and a reason to grow and evolve and complacency and comfort are usually things that actually they just diminish you. They, they lower you. It's okay to be a little, it's okay to be comfortable every now and then. It's so, you know, it's okay, but you don't have to, you can forgive yourself for finding yourself complacent, but what's going to make you alive is your passion is your, your desire to go do something. And I think that's why it's so important to have a, your gift in, in mind. You know, hmm. what are you passionate about? What, what excites you? You know, nobody can motivate you. Only you can motivate yourself. And what's going to motivate you is having an enriched, healthy connection to your gift and what, what, whatever that is for you. And you got to figure that out. But those are the things that are going to, you know, that's what's going to save humanity. If everybody is connected truthfully to like what matters to them and they actually feel alive about that, they're going to get up in the morning. They're going to be happy. They're going to want to make the world a better place. It's the people who are giving up on that, that are causing the toxic things. I mean, just look around. They're the ones that are toxifying their own bodies. And they're the ones that are generally toxifying the world. You know, the people who have passion and desire and, and uh, a sense of purpose, they're the ones that are bringing us to life. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's a reason why we need that in, in humanity, you know, because humanity can be harsh and it can be dark and we need that light. It brightens the world. Absolutely. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to talk quickly about the, um, on a di- different tack? <laughs> I do. I do. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, man, you never know where these conversations are going to go, but sometimes they just go this way. And I think, uh, you know, the sometimes letting out a little bit of a passionate, uh, speech about some of this stuff it can be good. It can be yeah. healthy. And, you know, and I think that it's, um, I, I don't, claim to rewrite. I think that I can always improve upon, and I'm trying to, I'm working at it. I'm always trying to prove my point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, but if there's one thing that I know, if I know anything in life is that, you know, no matter how dark it gets in the world, nothing is going to make you less bright. You know what I mean? And in fact, the darkness is only going to show how, how bright you are. So that's why you got to brighten that light. You know, you got to light up the world. It's your job. Yeah. No. How, how's your beer? <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I've been uh, drinking a, um, I believe it is a blackberry ale from uh, Vancouver Island Brewing. Nice. It's been, good. It's been good. I've been having, I've been having a British ale called Flaskers <laughs> from a Smuggler's Trail, which is a Langley brewery. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty tasty little little brew. So there you go. It has fueled the conversation. <laughs> Once again, we're not being sponsored by any of these breweries. We're just having a drink, having a conversation. Just goes well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I from where these conversations originated, which was just you and me writing a script in a having a brew and talking about our artist careers. Sometimes these conversations, they really amaze me where they, where they go and and what we end up talking about. And I think it's, it's a really wonderful thing to have an open conversation about this type of stuff and to try and communicate, you know, how we want to be in the world and what's important. And Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes the world can just 
it can just want your energy. It just wants your energy everywhere. And everybody's telling you, this is important. This is important. This is important. And I, I guess I would just want to say to, you know, our listening audience is that you're important. You're important. In fact, you're, you're, you're just as important as any of this, your life and your being is just as important as every issue we have in the world. And the reason why is because it takes one person could stand up and change everything, Mm -hmm. you know, and we've seen that throughout history, we quote them, right. And maybe you don't see that in yourself, but you don't have to, what you need to do is you need to just see that you're important. That's the first Mm -hmm. step. And if you don't see yourself as important, I mean, you know, you're just going to be powerless in the world. And you might not know, you just don't know. Like if you keep walking your path and you keep finding your way, who knows where that will lead for you. And so that's kind of the message that I, I really want to leave people with. And Mm -hmm. I think that these crazy world events only shine more of a light on how important each and every one of us are because we all contribute. Yeah. I, I yeah. want to just piggyback off of that a little bit and saying like, yeah, like, because of, of course you are important because there are so many people who are vying for your attention. <laughs> yes. It's because you are important and, and like, don't, don't get me wrong and don't get us wrong. I'm sure is that like, we're not saying that the things that are going on in the world are not important. Of course they are important. Rather, this is like there is um, an unbreakable connection and link between the personal and the collective, you know? And uh, so in order for like, we need to, both of those things need to be in order. And, but usually the best place to begin is with ourselves. And to kind of, I guess for me, just going back to where this conversation started is that you know there are these important things going on in the world and the best way that you can help and be of service and be an ally to the things going on in the world is for you to be giving your gifts is for you to be sharing your gifts don't worry about what people have to say about what that is you know like there, there's always going to be like within any artistry, there's always going to be people who have their opinions about, you know, whether you did it right or whether you did it wrong. Don't get involved in that. Get involved with your attention being on what you desperately have to say, what mm. you def- desperately need to express, the gift that needs to come out to, to help in this situation that that's that's all that you can do and i think that that's pretty much all that you can ever really feel good about at the end of the day so give your gifts your attention thanks for listening to the show if you got something out of this if you feel it improved your life or your journey in any way please take a moment to subscribe leave a review, or share the episode. You can also support us on Patreon, where we have tons of great bonuses. You are the ones that make the show possible and help us to thrive. Thank you for joining us.